right. <laughs> We're here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, let me just start off by saying, blessed morning. Yeah. And this is another segment of Talk To Me Dad. And I'm real excited about this one. I mean, in a really deep sense, I'm very, very delighted to have the man behind this camera, the man who has been um, supporting me and bringing this to life, you know. Um, it's a pleasure when you have a friend, a dear friend, who can help you with the wind beneath your wings, you know. So this beautiful soul is by the name of Martin Svek. Um, as a dear friend, I have always noticed his gifts of just being who he is and also sharing his love as a father. Um, I've had the joy of watching his process and not only just watching his process, I was actually um, the uh, master of ceremonies yeah. <laughs> at his wedding. However, um, blessed to have two beautiful children and one of the joys that I have of knowing him as a father is his playfulness. And his playfulness is always, to me, down in a learning experience. And no matter who we are in life, we get the opportunity to be examples. And I watch his children. I, I've been blessed to have had that opportunity many of times in this community. And the daringness that we all have for our fathers and mothers, depending on you know circumstances and situations, um, it comes across very, 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 very strong with his children to love. And it's, I feel as though it's because he shows up that way um, in a really loving, open-hearted, fun, playful, and at the same time, um, heartfelt ways to, to allow children to, to, to be themselves. And also on top of that, he's also a school teacher and he works with young folks. And um, so you get to see it on so many levels. I get to see it on so many levels. Um, and so choosing to have this talk to me, Dad, um, is a very special one to me because I would love to hear the depth of his spirit energetically. Um, what is it about um, being a father that helps him to keep cult cultivating that spirit within himself? So let me introduce you all to my dear friend here. Martin Svek, hey man, how are we? Hey, doing really well. Just listening, listening to you talk about my playfulness, and uh, yeah, I already have. It's already bringing up a lot for me, so I'm, <laughs> I'm ready to dive in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I'm I'm gonna go right at it, man. Yeah. And this whole um, setup for this, I would love to know what was your influence. Mm. How did your father mm. influence you on? being a dad with the way that you show up mm -hmm. um, for your children is just inspiring when, mm -hmm. I, when I'm watching you, you know. You also, you, you, what I wouldn't say what would be known as a, a, a musician in the world, but mm -hmm. you play piano, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. You're a storyteller. Mm -hmm. I see, I've seen you and actually in a cape. <laughs> You know, playing with your children, yeah. your character, you play yeah. characters, you, yeah. your playfulness, yet at the same time, it's, I see the freedom in your children that it's okay to be playful and right. loving right. and warm, you know? So, right. um, yeah, so just want to just get some more clarity around your background and who yeah. was your influence and yeah. how was that for you? Yeah, uh, for, I mean, first off, uh, the thing that comes to mind for me is that it's easier to be for me personally, it's been easier to be playful as a teacher. It's been easier for me to be playful as like the uncle or the older cousin because I have mm. a lot of younger, you know, uh, cousins and nieces and nephews. And it really challenged me at first as a dad because. I'm processing so much in a given day, you know, it, they're, they're crying one minute and they're upset and they're throwing a tantrum and then it's sweetness and, and to be able to flow between those emotions throughout the course of a day really takes a lot of fluidity within myself to be able to stay buoyant and not get so weighed down by the heaviness of, mm. 
adulthood or fatherhood and and I'm not even sure what what it is that necessarily switched within me you know when it became fatherhood time but I can relate it similar to my dad's experience and I can get into that in a second but I guess it's ultimately feeling like it's easier in some ways when it's not my kid you know when I'm at mm. when I'm at school yeah when I'm at school I'm a teacher I'm Mr. Speck like of course I'm gonna be chill and nice and sweet and playful and fun and funny and I can put on that show even if you know somebody's driving me crazy oh you know but with my kids I don't have that same I have to be honest I don't have that I haven't always had that same level of calmness you know with them sometimes they really get get under me and I just let it out you know sort of thing but then I have to check myself you know and so it's been a process of watching myself as the performer and the actor like you're saying with musician and you know uh, just anything even teaching feels like performing sometimes you know i'm getting up on stage and i'm sharing information but i'm also performing as a person to make sure that i'm presenting my very best self because i want my best self to be showing for kids who are looking up to me or you know following me um but it's performance Mm. you know and it's and performance isn't always the true self showing and and so with parenthood and fatherhood it's it's been about me learning how to be my true full self and in that refine 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 and continually polish myself mm. you know is, is I'll go, I'll go to bed in tears sometimes, uh, feeling like I didn't give enough that day, you know, to my kids or whatever, and not, not whatever, to my kids. <laughs> uh, but feeling like I didn't give enough to them that day. I, I mean, I didn't show up in a certain way. And the beauty of it, though, is the next morning, I know I have a, another shot at it. Yeah, and even even in the process of doing this, you know, here we are. I feel like this is so symbolic, you know, we have the sun rising behind us and things moving around us and and learning how to adapt. You know, and, and maybe that's really truly what fatherhood has been for me is learning how to adapt because as much as I want to imagine myself as a flexible person, <laughs> as much as I want to imagine that I'm the most flexible, easygoing person, I gotta be real, I'm not. <laughs> I could get better, you know? Mm. And uh, there's those things that I have in my mind of like, it should go this way or it needs to be like this, you know? And, and not so much that, you know, I can't budge from it ultimately, you know, but that there's this, this realization that, you know, there's a lot of those those fixed mindsets that I have that I don't even realize I have until I run into it, you mm. know, until I really hit that wall, say, oh, I'm really holding on to that idea of how I should be or how they should be or how this should be. And so ultimately coming down to this place of, of being able to adapt. Mm. And I feel like fatherhood is that, you know, is, is learning how to adapt to other people and other energies and other other scenarios you know and not just have this no it needs to be like this and if it's not like this i don't know what to do and you you have to change and it's kind of that masculine control you know letting go of that into more of a feminine um which i'm still learning to do you know is is honor that softer part of me um yeah yeah Mm. Yeah. so and so and and so pull back into the same question i asked in regards to examples yeah you know um you know uh with your father mm-hmm. um and even and, and so with the honestness around that too for some mm-hmm. folks um that has not been a great example for some father um, mm-hmm. for, um, for some fathers mm-hmm. because their fathers weren't there or um they were there but for a short period of time but yet there are some who has been very affected by the dads when they weren't there for a long period of time they just had this spell or this magic about them that the child has never let go for you how was it with you and your dad yeah 
For, for me, so just as awareness, uh, my, my dad passed away when I was 17, so my mm. senior year of high school. My junior year, we found out that he had cancer and, you know, basically was given two months to live and lived six, six months total. And it was just a rapid decline. Um, so that was an intense period. And, and before that, though, you know, looking back on the relationship that that we had and who he was as a person, I recognize there's there's a level of weight that he was carrying constantly. You know, it felt like it was some somebody else's weight or some mm. some weight that didn't feel like he had to be carrying. I, I don't know how to describe it other than he was trying to be something that maybe he didn't want to be. Mm. And and something happened, I remember my, my cousins would always say, your dad was so cool before, before you guys came along. You know? <laughs> <laughs> he was the cool Uncle John, you know? He would come over to our house and he would say boat time and we'd go get the boat and we'd go down to the river. And you know, he had a boat that you know, worked and stuff. You know? And, and uh, at this point, you know, there, he, he just became John who was focused on fatherhood and being a dad and working and and I understand too you know all of it comes with this understanding of like I totally understand you know what that shift feels like because I've felt it within myself um, but I see he shifted he shifted from being this person who slowed down and enjoyed life and was looking for each moment to live and bring this joy and playfulness to what I felt like was that he forgot how to do that while being a dad. And, mm. and there were times that I felt like, it's like, man, how I just wished, wished that he would have just slowed down a little bit and just really just like chilled out and just enjoyed us. Like, mm. I feel like for him just to, to have that in his heart that he could have enjoyed us as kids. Mm. And I, I feel like in his last days, he wrote in this card to me after years of telling me that I was wasting my time with basketball. I wanted to be an NBA player. What kid didn't <laughs> love basketball in the 90s, you know? Mm. Want to be like Mike and uh, he would always tell me, you know, you're wasting your mind. You're wasting a good mind. You have a great brain. Don't waste your mind with basketball. That's a whole nother story. Mm -hmm. But don't waste your time with that. And in my whole life, my mom was always the one. I'll be there, front row seat to your games. I can't wait to go see you. And so this had this polarity between the two. Wow. You know, and Dad was always pushing me, you know, to do something else. Don't do basketball. Waste of time. You're not doing enough anyways. You got to work harder. Da, da, da. So it was always last birthday card he wrote me three months before his death i hope that basketball brings you all that you've ever dreamed wow wow in his cancer riddled script that was just barely even his handwriting anymore and just to get that message from him finally mm. That. But you want to know something else. Yeah. There's another beautiful story. Before he moved in with my aunt, which was probably about four months before he died, so about four months before, he wrote that card three months before he passed away. Four months before, we were outside playing our last basketball game together. Oh. We grew up playing horse all the time. You know, one person takes a shot, if they make it, the other person has to try to match it. So I remember when I was growing up, I started getting better at basketball and I got all cocky and I was like, oh, I beat you. And there was a day where he was like, you know what? You're starting to get good at basketball and you gotta be humble about it. You know, it, I, I would let you win some games when you were little and I was being respectful to you because if, if I would have treated you like you're treating me now, you wouldn't want to play basketball anymore. You, mm. you know, you, you would, 
get so frustrated. So you got to be humble. You got to be respectful to people when you're playing them. But you know, nobody wants to play with somebody who's constantly saying, I beat you. So I was like, okay, okay. And so he comes out of the house. You know, I remember I was out there playing around. He came out of the house and he's like, let's play. And so there we are. We're playing, we're playing horse. And, and I make a shot. And he misses it. It's like one of his first ones, air balls it, something like that. So I got a letter on him. I make another one, gets another letter. I'm like, ooh, I can't beat him. Like, this guy's got cancer. <laughs> like, you oh, know, wow. Like, wow. He's sick. Look at him, you know? Like, <laughs> can't beat him like this. Like, I was like, I'm going to miss this one on purpose so he can get, get in a shot on me. So I missed it. And then, uh, and then he makes a shot, and I, I miss it, so now he's got a letter on me. The goal is to try to spell horse, for those that don't know how it, so he's got an H on me. And then he makes another one, and I miss it, and, and then we joust back and forth for a while, and he keeps hitting shot after shot after shot. And I miss it, and find, he has R on me, and I'm like, what is going on? Like, I, I was just kind of letting him, you know, run with it, and now he's coming at me. He ended up making seven, eight, nine in a row. Wow. Beat me. <laughs> and just the beauty in that, though, was like, I wanted to see him do well in that moment. Mm. And it was such a beautiful, beautiful thing to see of like our last game that we ever played together. Wow. The wisdom that he taught me of being humble came back. So the other thing I noticed that you're pretty much in the same position that your mom, I mean, that your dad was in. Mm -hmm. You have a sister, mm -hmm. and you also have a boy mm -hmm. and a girl. Mm -hmm. As a father, mm -hmm. for you, how are you treating each one differently mm -hmm. from a girl and a boy? Mm -hmm. How is that having effect on you? Mm -hmm. It's interesting, you know, because my dad for sure was the, would really push me more and was nice and soft with my sister. I was like, how come you can be soft with her and you can't be soft with me? <laughs> and so it's interesting to see that though, you know, with the relationship that I have with my kids, because if there's anybody I'm a little more hard with and, and push a little bit more, it's my daughter. And, and my son, he's... He was always a squishy little kid, you know, so we're squishy little buddy and we'd, you know, <laughs> snuggle in with him. And, and so I'm real affectionate with him. You know, I'm affectionate with both of them. But I would say, actually, I lean maybe a little more towards being affectionate with him in terms of, yeah, just giving him hugs and, like, snuggling. And he's, he's always been young. I mean, he's the younger one, so. Um, How much year? Many years two, apart? About two years. Okay. Difference. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so I've actually had to teach myself to be a little more affectionate with my daughter just because I don't want her to feel like men are distant, you know, because I'm, I'm really aware of that, of that I'm training them for the relationships that they're going to share with the opposite sex or the same sex later in life. And, and I, I want to make sure that she has a positive relationship with me you know, in all facets, you know, similarly with my son that, you know, he feels like it's okay to be affectionate with other men and that it's also okay to show your feelings with other men, you know, and mm. similarly for my daughter that, that she can trust that men are safe to share their feelings and emotions with and, and likewise. So that's something that I'm, I'm very aware of in terms of wanting to make sure that I'm giving my fullest to them. I'm not holding back in any kind of way. Mm. Mm. Um, one of the gifts of 
observing you as a father is I, I sense that you if the audience is to understand this use your third ear um, you're hearing what's coming out of their mouth you're using your ears to listen to them to hear them listening to them but you're hearing them a lot more deeper in my estimation could you could you expound on that a little bit yeah yeah to me it's a recognition that they're here to teach me something mm. and i really truly believe that kids are here to teach us you know that somehow in a, a strange way we f we forget so much as we get older we forget the innate wisdom that we we come with as spirit and kids by right wouldn't be able to survive in the world you know if they had their their ways they would be chasing every little thing that looks cute <laughs> or whatever <laughs> or getting lost out on in the woods somewhere uh so it, it's not always the sort of thing of you know when I say I, I listen to my kids and I listen and let them show the way it's not like yeah I just let them do whatever they still need boundaries they still need structure in their life but at the same time I'm recognizing that I need to loosen my structure I need to expand mm. my boundaries because as I've grown older I'm so confined by my fears I'm confined by my concepts of what my life should be like and I realize that they're here to, to remind me, mm -mm, expand, you know, you're greater than that almost. And, and there's, again, not almost, I am greater than that, you know, and they're here to, to teach me that. And one of the greatest blessings of fatherhood is I've discovered that I'm capable of so much more than I ever thought I was mm -hmm. because I have pushed myself to show up in their lives better and better. And without listening to them, I wouldn't be able to do that. Without paying attention to their emotions, I wouldn't be able to do that. Without acknowledging them and their truth, I wouldn't be able to raise myself because part of that learning from them is listening to them. And not just to their words, but observing their actions, observing just what they're being called to and what they're calling me to if mm. that makes sense oh yeah it does it makes a lot of sense so which actually brings me to this question and i'm going to take it way back right during the time of pregnancy with uh zeva you got nine months in those nine months or i'll even go as far as like the first three months what do you feel was awakened in you mm. knowing that there's a being that's getting ready to show up in your life eventually mm. Mm. and whatever awake awoken you what connection did you feel during that time with your beloved your wife and that future that was coming Yeah, honestly, there is a, a huge amount of pride that I felt. Mm. And not just pride of, oh, I feel so proud, I'm going to be a father. But it was this pride and this recognition of co-creation with Shinlin, my wife, that it feels so weird to say uh, because I don't want it to come across in in this possessive way or I don't even know the, the words for it but there is this pride that she was pregnant with my child mm. and that it was our child mm. you know, so I want to be clear that it wasn't just this self gratification sort of pride but it was this oh my god like we're gonna have a child and I helped create it like she's carrying my seed Mm. Like she's carrying part of me and to see her getting full and to see her becoming pregnant like I fell in love with her even more wow just because 
I, I have no explanation for it other than it was this powerful experience of she's carrying me. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And and there would be mornings, you know, that I would just I would snuggle into her before I'd leave for work. You know, I'd leave super early for school and and I would just see her laying there in bed and and I'd just snuggle in because I mean she just felt <clears throat> it felt like home is what it felt like. You know, to to see her and to see her getting full. She felt like mom in every sense of the word for like capital M, all moms, universal mother. Like she felt like home, it felt like mom and she was welcoming me into it. Wow. Wow. And so at the birth, you know, I felt it was mostly like what is happening right now is really honestly what it was. It wasn't this tearful sort of, oh my gosh, my child. As much as I wanted to feel that truly, it was more just, you know, I was also in the process of, uh, of just watching and just being in amazement of what was happening. Like mm. uh, that was actually probably the predominant feeling that I was having more than an emotion was just being in awe mm. of watching her in both childbirths was just watching my wife really just be in this zone of, of bringing life into the world and just being in full amazement of that, of just, just the sounds, just the strength that she was calling upon mm. and to see it, you know, to see it in her face, to see it in her body that I'd never seen before, that she had probably never seen in herself either. Mm. And, and evoked that, you know, and I, I feel as though birth is powerful bo for both parties, you know, the, the mother and the father, but to see that and feel that emotion that has maybe never been called upon, and I would say has never been called upon in their life because that, that only happens in that moment. And so, I feel in a lot of ways there was a cracking open of potential within the being and in the spirit of, whoa, this is possible within us to feel this. Um, so when you say to feel this, what is this? To this feeling I would say is we're capable of anything you know it's um, and purpose has arrived uh, it, there's this feeling of a deep sense of purpose just s shoots yeah. through the being you know Wow. So it's strength, it's purpose, and it's just awareness of humanity and humanness. And yeah, I have, I have it's really, there's the, it's cliche to say that there's no, no words for it, but to me, yeah, that feeling is strength coming through of the mother giving birth, the, the purpose of we have this child to care for. We have something to live for. Because I'd say before, before having children, I don't know that I had anything to live for. I wanted to live. I wanted to do things that sounded fun, but did I have something to live for? I wouldn't say I had something to live for. So to be given that purpose all of a sudden was intoxicating and, and empowering of, whoa, I have a purpose that I've never felt before in this, this lifetime.
Wow. You took me back. And what I mean by that, and uh, for me, like, talk to me, Dad. You, for me, just describe the undescribable. Mm -hmm. The best that you knew how. As a youngster myself, 16, maybe 17, the beloved that I was with, we're both young, we came to a decision to abort. And the moment that we both learned of the pregnancy, something changed in me. And that naturally fear, insecurity, young, but something was going on internally. And what you just shared with to me was, it was a purpose that was being born. And for the first time, I'm able to have a connection with that feeling in a long time. And I feel even though we've made that decision um, out of our insecurity and not knowing better, the reason of doing Talk To Me Dad was trying to come to an awareness of what was that. And that's the feeling of saying we were pregnant. And you just described because a purpose was being born that awaking a deeper reasoning inside of you of why you're here. In this moment, all I can just say to you, man, is thank you. Um, it's interesting because it feels like you actually brought a sense of closure inside of myself. Even though I've seen it and understood it in some ways, but you just, you, you awoke something inside just now mm. and um, wow mm. I just want to say thank you mm. just mm. yeah yeah and mm. I see that in your sharing in your children and more than anything even though we're doing a talk to me dad uh, this is almost a two part of like, talk to me husband. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> because I see your wife, mm -hmm. I look in her eyes, man, and the way that she looks at you, mm -hmm. of how you caretake both the children and her, mm -hmm. there is a subtlety, mm -hmm. a subtleness inside of her mm -hmm. that. It's not about using words in this moment to describe it, but it's, it's truly, truly, truly shown. And um, you just cracked open a part of me just now that I needed to, to, to have. And I want to take this moment to, my, to myself in some regards and just sit with this. So for that gift, beloved, I just want to say thank you, man. I am truly humbled in this moment. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting. So to speak of feelings, I feel a little, I'm in a space of unknown with me because you're the first person in this, for me, in these interviews that hit this spot for me mm. you know so I want to be with that mm. and I want to say thank you and I pray that for those who are blessed to have this opportunity to to watch um, all of the talk to me dads I pray that there's a constant pearl that is being dropped that we all can sit and 
resonate within ourselves and with depending on how we're all moving in life. But I can say for myself, a sweet pearl, a wisdom just dropped inside of me. Um, and I'm, I'm taking this moment to honor it. So, beloved, much gratitude, much, much, much gratitude. And thank you. Okay.